Hi, I'm Jenny Backus, Acting Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs here at HHS and the co-chair of our Open Government Committee. Thanks for joining us today. It's a very special day and a very t special time here at HHS. Today is the day we're unveiling our Open Government Plan, and we're kicking it off with this webcast to help explain what all of these Open Government Plan means to you and how you can benefit from it. Open government is nothing new to this administration, and at HHS, we're actually moving to the next level by expanding opportunities for sharing data with the public, for increasing public participation in all of our HHS activities, and for collaboration both here at HHS and across the world, especially through the use of new information and communications technologies, things like these webcasts. If you have a question for one of our guests today regarding our open government plan or our strategy for doing these kinds of things, email us right here in the studio at HHS Studio, um, right here in the HHS Studio at hhs.gov. Let me do that again, hhs.studio at hhs.gov. Please be brief and just let us know where you're from. We've been gathering questions all week as well. So earlier this week, um, we, we asked to get questions from you, and we're going to have a conversation today to answer some of them. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce you to our two panelists. Um, Todd Park is my co-chair on uh, the Open Government Committee. He is the Chief Technology Officer for HHS. And Josh Sharfstein is the Principal Deputy Commissioner of uh, the Food and Drug Administration here at HHS and a big innovator on open government. He's been doing some great things with the team at, at FDA. So. Let's, we want to start off the discussion, but first I want to tell you all that you can also read our open government plan on our website, which is hhs.gov slash open. Um, and it's very easy to find. Um, we've, done, we've really tried to make it very user friendly with charts and graphs. Um, and what is also is a dynamic um, document, so we want you to give us our, your feedback on it. But first, let's start off the discussion with Todd. So, Todd. The president put out an announcement today. Robert Gibbs talked about it at the press briefing. What is the open government sort of idea? Why is the administration so behind it? Why is HHS so excited about it? Yes. Uh, well, um, as you know, Jenny, uh, right after he was inaugurated, one of the first things the president did was issue a call for more openness in government. Uh, and what he meant by that was a government that's more transparent, more participatory, and more collaborative. Uh, transparency means publishing data, government data, for the public, so the public can hold us accountable for what we do, uh, and data that generates multiple kinds of uh, new social benefits. Uh, participation is about, in the words of the president, accessing expertise of citizens across society uh, to engage citizens in the work of government to help, be, help us be more efficient and effective. And uh, collaboration is about the government working well with itself uh, across different branches of government, uh, federal, state, local, and working well with folks outside government uh, in an all-hands-on-deck spirit of commonwealth uh, to advance the ball on key social issues. And so when the president it calls for more open government, he's talking about a government that actually hears better these principles of transparency, participation, and collaboration. Uh, and uh, it's above all a government that in doing so works better. It's not just openness for openness sake. It's actually openness in the name of delivering better results to the American people. Uh, and that's actually why we're so thrilled at HHS to embrace it. Uh, not just for the sake of openness, but because we actually passionately believe that an HHS that's more transparent, participatory, and collaborative is an HHS that will deliver ever better results against our mission of improving the health and welfare of the American people. Great. Now, what are some ways, you know, through this plan or through this process that the public can engage? Oh, there are many, many ways. <laughs> and we need all the help we can get. Uh, first, actually, um, the plan that we're publishing today, uh, which, which has been the result of a ton of very hard work by folks across HHS and a lot of public input, is just the beginning of our open government journey. Uh, it's a plan that we very much want to get a lot of public feedback on. So we would really encourage folks to go to our open government web page, check out our plan. Uh, there are multiple places to comment throughout the plan uh, and help us improve it, help us make it better. Because it's a plan we continue to uh, want to iterate over time uh, and update over time. Um, uh, the plan also actually lays out, uh, along with the Open Gov website overall, a whole series of ways the public can actually engage in the, the different activities of HHS. So um, there are more traditional ways, uh, these federal advisory committees. We've set up over 200 on various topics uh, which are open to the public and which we want the public to engage in and give us their uh, feedback on, uh, on a whole host of important issues. Uh, there are more uh, cutting-edge ways, uh, like our presences uh, on uh, Facebook 
and Twitter and social media, which provides a, a Web 2.0-ish way for people to engage. Um, and then there are uh, even newer ways. Uh, for example, one of the uh, uh, things that's actually launching uh, this week in terms of OpenGov HHS is in collaboration with the Sunlight Foundation. We're launching under the Design for America competition that they're running uh, a uh, first ever HHS application challenge uh, for best interactive visualization of community health data. Uh, so if you're a developer uh, and, uh, you know, you uh, have uh, a hankering to help improve the health of the United States, uh, go check out um, our section of Design for America and scrub in and uh, see what you can do. Um, but actually, go to our OpenGov website, and there's actually an inventory uh, under the Get Involved uh, section of the, of the website of all the different ways that folks can plug into uh, and participate in the, in the work of HHS. Now, one of the other things that we're going to talk about, and I want to bring Josh in in a second here around this topic, is... HHS, big agency, lots of different people, generates tons of information oh, every yeah. day. How Incredible. did you like go about and, and what was the thinking behind some of the data that you're featuring on the site and why, you, why did you choose to highlight that kind of data yeah. versus all the other information that HHS puts out? Yeah. Well, so, so I just joined HHS six months ago, um, and I was just absolutely stunned, like everyone is when they first join, um, at the just massive breadth and depth of the information that we have across the Food and Drug Administration, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the National Institute of Health, et cetera. And so it presents a, a crisis of overwhelming opportunity. <laughs> How can you possibly sort through all that and figure out what to do? Um, so what we actually decided to do uh, was, we, was we decided to uh, do a number of things. First of all, uh, really align our data release strategy against the strategic priorities of the department around the transformation of healthcare, around prevention and wellness, around the uh, advancement of, of research and cures and improvement in the, in the quality of healthcare, around early childhood health and development, uh, around uh, care for seniors. Um, and against those priorities, uh, we said, okay, well, what data can we actually put out there um, that would be uh, super helpful in advancing those priorities. Uh, and there are uh, multiple concrete commitments we've made in our plan to do so. Um, the other thing that we actually did that uh, I thought was um, really fruitful was we asked for input from the public um, on our OpenGov website. Um, and folks uh, were able to uh, come up with a bunch of really great ideas and, and actually be very articulate about them uh, in ways that were very persuasive. Uh, so, for example, uh, just to call one out, Nancy Watzler, uh, made a very interesting case um, on our OpenGov website um, that we should actually take uh, the um, uh, food, drug, and medical device recall data um, that FDA provides and make it downloadable in XML format, uh, basically downloadable in a structured form that people could use to mash up with other data and turn into useful apps. So FDA, um, under leadership of uh, Dr. Hamburg and Dr. Sharfstein, have in fact committed to do that um, by the fourth, fiscal, fourth, fourth quarter uh, of this uh, fiscal year and third quarter of this calendar year. Uh, which is fantastic. And so, which in English is like fall of 2010. Fall of 2010, <laughs> yes. yeah. One of the other pieces of input that we actually got was from Snowbound in Virginia and from Tommy J, who said, please speak in English. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I and you know, that's know a challenge that. for yeah. us in government, but actually, we endeavored to write our entire open government plan in English. Uh, we love feedback on whether we succeeded in that as well. Uh, but yes, in the fall of uh, this year, uh, we anticipate releasing uh, this uh, super cool structured. Uh, recall data, uh, which will be very helpful, and that, uh, you know, was one of the ideas that was from Nancy Watzler. Uh, and so one of the other uh, asks that we have uh, for America um, is to keep those ideas coming, because uh, it really helps us uh, as we uh, face a cornucopia of possible data releases to come up with the ones that, that the public really wants and the ones that could be most beneficial. So. Open government helps with data that the public can look at, but open government strategies have also been helping on how we do business every day in our agencies. And so, Dr. Sharfstein, I'd love to have you describe a little bit about this idea that you guys had, FDA Track. Sure. Um, FDA, FDA Track, which we're releasing today, um, is a new system for measuring performance at FDA. We are tracking over 100 offices with more than 300 key measures and projects every month. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what FDA does, but now they'll be able to go online to our website, which is www.fda.gov, um, and see the progress that each of our offices is making towards its goals, see the key work that we're doing um, uh, on behalf of public health, and look at questions like, when we're doing inspections, what are we finding? Um, how many generic drugs are waiting to be reviewed? Are we making the progress we want to make to get quicker identification of contaminated food during outbreaks? All the 
key projects that we're working on that relate to the public health, we're, our goal is to put them up on FDA track and show the public what we're doing and have them uh, look at our progress. And is a very important, I think, for how the public relates to FDA and very exciting internally also because the process of putting together these 300 plus measures has involved people across the agency thinking about what they want to accomplish and being prepared to be accountable for it. Well, I was going to say, in some ways it seems like it's really promoting accountability. So how is this sort of different in terms of performance measures than what you've seen before? I mean, it seems very different from the very little that I know about how we've set them up in the past. Sure. Um, accountability is the A in FDA track. Um, <laughs> T go. stands for transparency. Um, I think that in the past, agencies have been measured by some broad overall measurements over the course of the whole year. So maybe how many inspections have you done? You know, and then you find out at the end whether you've made it or not. Our measures are monthly. There are many more of them, and they're really targeted to things that we think really matter. So you know, we'll be looking to see once we're aware of a problem, how quickly is the public notified? You know, um, uh, for certain types of problems that the public needs to be notified quickly. Um, and then we'll track that over time, and people will be able to go online and see our progress. All right, I have a question for both of you. How, um, I, so you've, you've worked outside of government. You've worked both inside and outside of government on the state level. How different is this? I mean, I'm not doing this as some way to give us a big pat on the back, but is this, is this different approach than we've seen before? And what, would, what are the benefits for, like, the average mom sitting at home trying to figure out what does this mean for me? Is this just more tech and jargon, or how does this like relate to my life? So how different is this, and how does it relate to an everyday person's life? Yep, um, yep. And before we do that, just if you have other questions, hhsstudio at hhs.gov, uh, send them in, and we will get your questions. But let's go back. So how different, and how does it relate to my life? I think it's uh, an incredibly important uh, shift uh, in how we think about government. Um, and I think it's uh, an enormously important part um, of what the president believes um, should be um, uh, what government's all about. Um, I think that, um, you know, over time, you know, government seemed uh, more and more remote uh, to citizens um, and uh, is simultaneously facing ever more complicated challenges. I mean, if you think about the kinds of things that HHS is taking on, uh, like helping to transform the, the health care system, you know, helping to uh, uh, combat um, uh, pandemics, you know, helping to uh, advance food safety, um, helping to uh, advance the, the well-being of, of children and seniors. I mean, these are colossal, <laughs> incredibly complicated challenges. And I think that, you know, I mean, the way I thought about it is that, uh, you know, open government is essential to uh, a 21st century government being able to take on those challenges uh, and lead us as a nation to success. Um, you know, I can't imagine doing any of those things without disseminating information to the public, you know, without actually engaging citizens from all walks of life um, in the, the great challenges uh, that they present, uh, without uh, collaborating uh, with academia and businesses and not-for-profits and, and folks from all over. I, I think that transparency, participation, collaboration are essential uh, to how uh, our American government should work in the 21st century uh, to improve the health and well-being of the American people, um, to lead us to a better place. Um, you know, positioning government as, you know, essentially not a unilateral force uh, that attempts to sort of single-handedly solve all the problems of the world, but rather as a catalytical force, uh, you know, one that helps to mobilize um, and join up with uh, other powerful forces, uh, the power of our citizenry, uh, to really improve the, the health of our country. Um, so I actually see it not as yet another thing to do or as some kind of compliance exercise, but something that's fundamental to how an effective government should uh, actually serve the American people in the 21st century. Now, Josh, I want you to answer that question, but this spurned another one. You run a big, huge agency. What kind of reception did you get to, like, more performance metrics uh, and this, you know, sort of new philosophy of doing things? It's kind of very different, I think, than what's been done before. How is that playing with your employees, and how does that translate to the, your customers, either the sure. companies you regulate or the people that come to you for more information about drug and food safety? Well, I think for a long time FDA has been seen as a black box. People don't really understand outside of FDA what goes on inside. And I think that's been a source of some frustration to the employees of FDA who are justifiably quite proud of the kind of work that they're doing. And I think they really see the potential of a system like FDA track to show 
office by office, the kind of work that's going on. There's an office deep inside FDA that's really working on helping drug companies produce drugs of higher quality. Um, the actual manufacturing process. There's another office that's working on uh, figuring out uh, ways to do uh, different kinds of tests that can be applied to make sure that they're not contaminants in drugs and food. And now people will be able to watch their progress online, whereas before they might have been just totally hidden behind kind of the curtain of, you know, the bureaucracy. So I think that there's a lot of excitement about this. I think we realize that we're we're going to be open to questions about our performance, but I think we're ready to, to do that. There may be some goals that we make that we don't reach, and we'll have to explain why that's the case. But that's part of being a, an agency in an, in an era of open government. You know, um, to your earlier question, um, when I was the health commissioner of Baltimore City, we had a, a, a performance manage management initiative called CityStat, where I had to stand up in front of the mayor and deputy mayor every month and I was accountable for all the different parts of what the health department did. And there is a lot of work, cities around the country, states around the country, to do this kind of office by office management and accountability. And um, I think that we're trying and doing this at FDA track to take some of the key lessons from that experience and apply them in an agency that typically has been kind of seen as a black box. All right. From the public back to some things that other people can do, the forces that you were talking about uh, earlier, to leash the forces to get more than just our government microphones putting out the data and the information that people need to know. Mm -hmm. Dave has emailed in with a question. David from in Virginia, what data mashups, mm. that sounds kind of techy, so you might need to explain that I to some that. people like me, <laughs> what data mashups would you like to see developers create? Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic question. Um, First, you have to define the term, yeah. data mashup. Um, so uh, data mashup being basically, uh, you know, take uh, um, you know, data um, that we might provide um, and uh, data that might be available elsewhere and combine them into a beautiful um, one plus one equals five uh, type thing. Um, so uh, one thing actually I'll talk about, uh, I mean, there are many, 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 uh, as I start to prioritize against our strategic priorities, <laughs> as we talked about. <laughs> uh, but one, one area I want to talk about in particular is the improvement of community health. Um, we, and I think that's one of our flagship it's initiatives. It's one of our flagship initiatives, exactly, right. our open gut plan. So one of our flagship initiatives um, is uh, something we're calling the Community Health Data Initiative. I would love actually a, maybe a catch your name for that. <laughs> so actually, would like to ask that as well. But we're calling it the Community Health Data Initiative. And the whole idea is uh, a, it's a public-private collaboration and the best spirit of open government uh, to try to help Americans better understand health in their communities and to help spark and inform action to improve it. Because really all health care and health is local, right? If, if you think about, uh, you know, the notion of, of, of citizens actually being to get a better understanding of what's going on in their community and joining arm in arm to try to do something about it and having a whole uh, a panoply of, of that activity happening in communities across the country, it really is a very exciting thing to, to contemplate. And that's exactly what we're trying to do with the Community Health Data Initiative. And so um, our approach is actually, uh, you know, again, not for the government to kind of unilaterally go in and basically say to everybody, you know, here's what's going on and here's what you should do in your community because that just wouldn't work. Uh, but rather for HHS to recognize it, we've got a lot of data uh, that actually articulates um, uh, how we're doing as a country, as states, as counties, uh, with respect to uh, measures like obesity uh, and smoking, uh, with respect to determinants of health and well-being, uh, like access to uh, uh, healthy food, et cetera. And so uh, what we actually are going to do is just very simply take all that data, uh, make sure that it doesn't compromise, uh, you know, uh, individual privacy, and release it uh, in a structured, standardized form um, that is uh, free of charge uh, to the public. And what we're then doing is actually effectively trying to market that data uh, to folks like Dave, who asked the question, um, and not-for-profits and companies and research organizations, et cetera, uh, to take that data and turn it into super cool applications and mashups and programs um, that could help citizens gain a better uh, understanding of community health, um, to help put pressure on decision makers, uh, like mayors or county officials or local employers to do something about it, and to help uh, facilitate and improve performance. Uh, these applications slash mashups could be interactive community health maps to allow me as a citizen without a PhD in health economics to understand uh, health performance in my town versus uh, another town. Um, ideas people can come up with actually include uh, social networking games. Uh, I think Farmville, but for health, that help educate uh, a whole bunch of folks, actually. On, uh, on what's going on in terms of community health and how to improve it. Um, uh, ideas include potentially, uh, you, know, uh, you know, inserting uh, community health performance data 
uh, in untraditional venues, like one idea actually uh, from uh, Redfin, which is a real estate website, is to actually put next to the school system um, some measure of community health performance to help uh, a whole new audience actually understand uh, what's going on uh, with respect to uh, community health um, and other ideas uh, along these lines. And so, um, so, so basically, we're, we, the government's role is to put the data out there and yeah. let the public do with it what they want to do. It's what not like mandates or anything. No, it's no. Just and, and in it fact, I am 100% confident that the public will actually take our data and come up with vastly more powerful, vastly more innovative, and vastly more uses of it than, than we could ourselves. And so, um, so Dave, I'm, I'm super interested in, in you scrubbing in uh, on our data um, and you telling us what you think you can do with it. Uh, to help increase awareness of community health and to help spark action to improve it. I can't wait. Great. Um, Josh, any thoughts on you for like some of the data that you guys are producing or anything new coming down the pike for you on that front, um, sort of post-FDA track? Well, um, one of the things we're very interested in our website um, has uh, set up an email address for comments because FDA track is really just getting started. And we're interested in people looking at the measures that we're setting for ourselves, telling us what they think, suggesting other measures. We're going to go through a period where we're kind of honing this so we can make it as, as effective as possible for the various goals that we have. Um, as you know, and I think is also in the open government plan, we also have a transparency initiative at FDA, and we've gotten um, well over a thousand comments on the uh, FDA transparency blog. And uh, we're looking at, uh, we, we've launched FDA Basics, which is a, a website that explains a lot about what the agency does. Um, and we're looking at a, a whole range of other potential steps on transparency down the road. Well, actually, this leads into this question that we just got from Helen from Washington, for, from both of you, Washington, D.C. She says, are there any efforts being put into place to improve the ease of finding relevant information quickly? And are web analytics being captured for these efforts also? Will this information be shared with the public as improvements are made? So as we present information to the public, whether it, what an office does or a bunch of data, what's our philosophy and thinking behind that? And I guess I'll talk with you and then I'll go to you, Josh. Yes. Uh, so one of the, it's a fantastic question uh, with, with multiple different dimensions. And so um, I'll, I'll address uh, at least a couple of them. So one is that uh, on our open government website, uh, we've actually, among other things, put a compendium of uh, uh, all the data um, that we have um, that we're making publicly available for, for download, uh, which is also actually mirrored on the government's overall data.gov site. Um, and so uh, it's a much easier way for people to actually find stuff that could be cool and useful. Um, and uh, we're actually uh, incredibly interested <laughs> in um, uh, encouraging the use of that data and actually uh, trying to get a sense of what people are finding valuable about our data and what we should do to correct the data that we're putting out there and, and make it easier to use um, and uh, what additional data we could put out there that would be most valuable. Um, and so uh, we will actually be uh, subsequently as part of Open Gun Plan on our Open Gun website putting places for people to voluntarily uh, tell us actually uh, what they're doing with our data. Another place for people to tell us um, the stuff in our data that needs to be fixed <laughs> for it to actually be more usable. Um, and uh, furthermore through things like uh, the Community Health Data Initiative, things like the uh, Design for America Challenge um, for best visualization community health. We're trying to also put proactive challenges out there um, and uh, proactive uh, mechanisms out there uh, to uh, really market the data and get people to plug into it um, and turn it into, into useful stuff. But we'd love any additional idea, ideas people have. Um, uh, please post them in our, in our Open Gov Plan comment sections uh, about how to act on the, along the lines that Helen was just talking about. And just so folks know, too, we also work very hard uh, in the Public Affairs Office to generate metrics each week. I know, Josh, I'm going to come to you, and I know you can talk about that at FDA, too, but we really try to look at the metrics of who's looking at what site, what they're clicking it on, and we try to use that as ways to reorganize our websites and our communications with you guys. Um, so taking off my public affairs hat, yeah. going back to my moderator hat. Um, Josh, do you want to talk a little bit about what you've been doing at FDA to sort of try to use web analytics and metrics and things like that to get the information out to people? Sure. I, I also want to emphasize Todd's point that people may not know when they're starting with the question that the data is at FDA, and it really is the value of sites like data.gov and some of these other overall arching sites that really help people find where the data may be kept in the federal government. One of the things that we think is very important is every time people come to our site to give them the opportunity to tell us they're looking for something if they're having trouble finding it and then you know we can follow up with them and, and do that and we've gotten you know uh, 
thousands of requests on the FDA basic site for more basic information about the agency that we're uh, working through and making a lot more information available. And uh, to your point, Jenny, it's, there's no question. We want to know where people are on our site, what they're doing, where is it you know, uh, working and where, where is it not working so that we can continually improve. Great. We have a, a bunch more questions, and we're running a little. Sh we're getting short on time, so I'm going to try to whip through them. Okay. Um, let's, Chris and Todd. Maybe you want to take this one because I know you were involved with the secretary and a lot of stuff earlier this week. Mm -hmm. Chris from Denver says, "Will the implementation of the health care bills be available in a timely manner via open government?" Absolutely, absolutely. Um, in fact, actually, the secretary um, said to us earlier this week um, that uh, this could not be a more perfect time to roll out our open government plan. Um, because uh, it's, it's very important to her to communicate that as HHS takes on uh, the most ambitious agenda in its history, um, that we are going to change how we do business um, uh, along the lines of open government, um, such that uh, we are maximally efficient and effective, um, transparent, participatory, and collaborative in how we roll uh, with, with health reform. And so uh, major uh, streams of update uh, to our open gov plan uh, will flow uh, from our implementation work uh, on health reform, and that will be uh, uh, stuff that folks will see uh, in, in, in uh, future releases of our plan. Great. Lynn from St. Louis wants to know, and I'm going to have you answer, and I'll answer it a little bit with my public affairs hat. Yeah. How do you plan, and, and Josh, jump in here too if it's relevant to FDA. How, she, Lynn's from St. Louis, and she wants to know, how do you plan to inform the general public about open government? Mm -hmm. Will you somehow get this on the news talk shows to let people know about the very simple things that you're promoting in the plan, like mm -hmm. hospital compare and nursing home compare, which mm -hmm. are two programs that CMS, who's also doing a very good job, on open government has yeah, had for a couple of years now, I think. Absolutely, yes. Um, so, uh, so we're going to do uh, a, a bunch of different things. Uh, in addition to our um, our open gov website, um, in addition to uh, a whole series of uh, open gov uh, launch events, we'll be doing around the different initiatives that our plan commits us to do. Uh, in addition to doing uh, uh, social media powered outreach, um, which we're really uh, really pushing hard on, um, I'd actually love to get. Uh, additional ideas from the public on how to do this because uh, you know uh, we really really need really really want input <laughs> from the public we really want to engage the public um, in the work of open government because that's the whole point um, and I think a critical dimension of that is how do we get the word out to more and more people um, and we just really love creative ideas from the public uh, with respect to how to do that one thing I do want to tell you about from the public affairs side is we think not only is it really important to reach out to the public and get your input, like all the great questions we're getting today and that we got over the past couple of days, but also we really think it's important to educate and keep our employees involved because yes. this plan came from our employees. It came from our employees at HHS. It came from the employees at FDA. Um, and so we've also been doing a lot of internal communication to get by a um, and really get people committed to sort of the philosophy of open government here at HHS. So we're both going to be doing an internal communications process, constantly looking for feedback internally and also externally. And I know, Josh, you've been doing some of that at FDA, too. Yes, absolutely. We're doing that. And um, on the other point, we're looking for many different ways of getting this out. We, we communicate a lot to the medical community, and we have uh, pilots, for example, to get information right to people's handheld devices as close to possible at the point of care. So when there's information that we have at FDA that we want people to use or to have access to for, for in the healthcare setting, they have it as quickly as possible. Well, we're getting right down to the end. Um, I just want to do a shout out, partly because you're from Baltimore, but Alan from Baltimore mm -hmm. said, a small group of us have been working on open source projects, health related projects. How do we become more involved? So as we close out, yeah. how do people become more involved in this process and how long is it going to go on? And Absolutely. Give me your last closing thoughts. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the uh, most important things that I think we need to say today is that uh, the debut of our Open Good Plan is just the beginning um, of uh, a uh, eternal journey uh, toward more and more open government. I really think of open government as as a journey, not a destination. I think it's something we can get better and better at over time, um, and uh, we need uh, folks um, across the country to plug in. Um, and so, I'd really encourage folks who want to get involved uh, to come to our Open Good website. Um, and uh, the Open Good Plan provides a nice architecture of the different things we're doing. And if you want to help with um, a given thing, uh, then in the comment section, basically say, sign me up <laughs> to do X and do Y, um, and we will, we will follow up with you. Um, uh, I mean, I, I can tell you, I read every single one of the comments and ideas that we got, 
um, during uh, our comment period um, before the publication of our plan. Uh, they were just terrific. They were just terrific. And not all of them are actually in our plan, uh, you know, but we are looking at all of them <laughs> uh, for future iterations of our plan. Uh, and we want uh, to get more ideas and, and uh, to get more help. Um, so please uh, tell us uh, that you're ready and willing to help at our OpenGov website. Anything else, Josh? Last words? Uh, well, we have a few places on the FDA website, the transparency blog. We'd love to get as, as many comments and input as, as we can, and we're definitely looking at it and, and uh, taking steps based on what we hear. I think for us the principle is that, you know, we're a public health agency, and the word public is in public health. We've got to really uh, work for the people that we're trying to protect at FDA, and we want to do that in a way that is collaborative and, and makes us as effective an agency as possible. Well, that's great. And um, I'm sorry we didn't get to all your questions. Ned, you have a good one here. I'm going to make Todd answer it on his next blog post. Um, but I want to thank you all for um, emailing in today and for all the emails that you've sent all along the way in this process, both to FDA and to HHS. We hope you got some of your questions answered. Um, we are going to, in the spirit of openness and understanding that not everybody has this hour between one and two free today, are also going to make it available on demand shortly. So you can go to our website, hhs.gov slash open, um, and and look for um, the, the, the icon that will take you to this, to this and to other future open government webcasts. We'll be doing more of these. We hope you join in the discussion to help us have a more open government. I'm Jenny Backus, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.